Everybody that came out today, I'm Professor McAllister. I'm going to do a presentation on Latin American literature that is practically unknown to the rest of the world. So that's why I imagine some of you registered for this class, right? Am I right? Can yes. I get an amen on that? Yes. yes. Let's get some knowledge, right? I'm going to go through some highlights for the course in the beginning. So here we have it. The flags of Latin America. Okay, there are 19 Latin American nations in the Western Hemisphere. As the map, which is coming up in a minute, clearly depicts 19. I asked the class the other day if they knew, they didn't know. I asked them on the other hemisphere of the planet Earth, the continent of Africa, how many nations are there? Nobody knew. There are 50, 50 African nations. So basically we're looking at the great liberator, Simon Bolivar. There was a country named after him, Bolivia, which is in South America. And he is considered the great liberator. He was born in Venezuela in 1783 and passed in 1830. He was one of the first to ponder the future of Latin America in terms of gaining their independence from Spain and the hegemonic control that they exercised on this continent. Simon Boulevard, once again, the great liberator, in a text that stands as a gateway in Latin America, mediation on the identity of his culture known, La Carte de Jamaica, also known as Jamaica, which is in the West Indies. After a disagreement over the conduct of the siege of Santa Marta, that's where he had retired. He retired to Jamaica. There he wrote this letter in the style of classical epistles addressed to a gentleman of this island, probably the British governor. This concise allowed him to write as if in dialogue with his correspondent, a cultured man to whom the situation and future of Latin America has to be explained from the ground up. In the letter, he justifies the Revolutionary War and declares himself against monarchies, federalism, and the, even democracy. Latin America, we're looking at uh, the first Latin America Woman Award Prize winner. Here she is. Her name, Gabriela Mistral. She was awarded the Nobel Prize also meant that Latin American literature, independent of Spanish literature, was beginning to be recognized in the West. Gabriela Mistral. It is said that Gabriela, or Lucia Godoy Alcayaga, born in Chile, 1889, and passed in 1957, made her melodious pen name, combining those of two of her favorite writers, Gabriel de Anuncio and Frederick Mistral. Now we move on to another Nobel Prize winner in Latin American literature, Pablo Neruda. One of his saying in Spanish is, Sufre más aquel que espera siempre que aquel que nunca esperó a nadie. Podrán cortar todas las flores, pero no he says you can cut the flowers, but at the same time you can't stop the spring season from rejuvenating life. So they get very poetic. Walt Whitman's Titanic quest to write a personal and collective epic naming the new realities of the new world found echoes in the Latin American poetry of the likes of Neruda and Garcia Marquez's fictions. So one, one of the famous saying of Walt Whitman was, do anything but let it produce joy. Okay? Look, look at this our ripe old age he lived to be. See it? Neruda 
who Dubro, for all his accomplishments and self-promotion, was soon upstaged by his compatriot Pablo Neruda, 1904 to 1973, a poetic volcano who became one of the leading poets of the 20th century and a prominent political figure. Por, the same saying, Podrán cortar todas las flores, you can cut all the flowers, pero you cannot podrán detener en la primavera. You can cut all the flowers, but the natural forces of the universe is going to take you to the spring. Octavio Paz. Octavio Paz was a very young, but he was born in Mexico in 1914 and passed in 1998. He was also at that congress in Valencia with Neruda, Guillén, and many others. He was destined to become the next Latin American poet to win the Nobel Prize, and Neruda's antagonists, both in poetry and in politics. Paz visited Spain as a politically committed intellectual with Karl Marx, Lenin's, and left-wing connections. One of his first books, No Pasarán, They Shall Not Pass, published in 1936, takes it back as title one of the slogans of the Republican cause in Spain. Back in Mexico, he wrote with the left as a result of the Nazi-Soviet pact in 1939 and became a bitter and persistent critique of communism and for the rest of his life. So th this course is going for another three weeks. So these are other uh, Latin American writers that we didn't get to as yet. So we're going to see if we can expand this PowerPoint presentation and cover more writers. Thank you so much. I'm out. Nothing untouched. My love is open, wide as the sea, full as the snow, flowing from above down below. Every creature experiences me. You ask, how does one know? The air you breathe is an indicator of how my love flows. Give it up for her. Very good. Excellent. Thank you. Tammy Joseph. Okay. Um, as, the, as the sun rises into the sunset, the eye still wanders in darkness, and the mind reflects on the past. Go ahead. The inner child awakens. Strange and horrific vivid thoughts stream through recklessly while reality wants to break through and sustain. Not only the inner child, but the individual who loves. Time after time, nights after nights, the, individu the individual remains tormented by the fact that the inner child no longer wants to endure the pain and agony of the past, but, it, but is unable to be set free. Oh, the inner child in me. Color of my people, the history of my people, the weakness in my people, the tears of my people, the losing of my people, watching others belittling my people, knowing my people were sold to other people, the sadness in my people, the happiness in my people, the strength of my people, the courage of my people, the knowledge of my people, the freedom for my people, the color of my people. Powerful. Good afternoon, everyone. Today I'm going to give you a presentation on Latin American literature. Our professor Orlando McAllister has worked a work of art this spring 2019. So let's begin. There are 19 Latin American nations in the Western Hemisphere as the map clearly depicts. Simon or Simone right. Bolivar, the great liberator, was born in Venezuela in 1783 through 1830, who was among one of the first to ponder the future of Latin America. Simone Bolivar, the great liberator, in a text that stands as a gateway in Latin American mediation on the identity of its culture known La Carte de Jamaica. Mm -hmm. The liberator had retired to Jamaica after a disagreement over the conduct of the seas of Santa Marta. Mm -hmm. There he 
wrote this letter in the style of classical epistle, epistles mm -hmm. addressed to a gentleman of this island, probably the British governor. This concise allowed him to write as if in dialogue with his correspondence, a cultured man to whom the situation and future of Latin America has been explained from the ground up. In the letter, he justifies the revolutionary word declaring himself against monarchies, federalism, and democracy. Latin American Nobel Prize winner. The fact that one of the women, Gabriela Mistral, was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize also meant that Latin American literature, independent of Spanish literature, was beginning to be recognized in the West. Gabriela Mistral. It is said that Gabriela Luisa Godor Alacata mm -hmm. Chile, 1889-1957, made her melodious pen name combining those of two of her favorite writers, Gabriel de Anazuzo mm -hmm. and Frederick Ministro. Pablo Neruda. Nobel Prize winner. Walt Whitman's titanic quest to write a personal and collective epic naming the new realities of the new world found echoes in the Latin American poetry of the likes of Neruda and Garcia Marquez fictions. Neruda who Dobro, mm -hmm. for all his accomplishments and self-promotions, was soon upstaged by his compatriot, Pablo Neruda, 1904-1973, a poetic volcano who became one of the leading poets of the 20th century and a prominent political figure. Octavio Paz. Octavio Paz was a very young man, born in Mexico, 1914 to 1998, was also at that Congress in Valencia with Neruda, Gillian, and many others. He was destined to become the next Latin American poet to win the Nobel Prize and Neruda's antagonist both in poetry and in politics. Paz visited Spain as a politically committed intellectual with Karl Marx leaning and left-wing connection. One of his first books, No Passeron, They Shall Not Pass, 1936, takes it back as title one of the slogans of the Republican cause in Spain. Back in Mexico, he broke with the left as a result of the Nazi-Soviet pact in 1939 and became a bitter and persistent critique of communism for the rest of his life. To be continued. Thank you. Tammy Joseph, thank you very much.